Do, 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 do. What's going on? Navi promo, man. I don't know who's later, more later, the promoter or the rappers these days. It seems like no, no. I saw, I, I saw with Knuckles did, and I couldn't let Knuckles, you know, give more suspense than me. Huh. Well, you definitely had me in utter suspense. <laughs> No, man, I, got, I do other stuff, too, man. So, and everything came crashing down at the same time. My apologies. No worries, man. I'd like to welcome everybody to the Leeds Edutainment Podcast, brought to you by Chubby Yes, Chubby. sir. Today, we got a special guest, uh, fellow colleague and independent promoter, Navi Promo, celebrating yes, sir. 20, 20 years in the business. Yeah, believe it or not. <laughs> some people don't like when I say it, though. Well, I do. Um, Navi promo is on all the uh, tags and everything. Is that on your birth certificate? First name Navi, last name promo. I mean, did you change your name? <laughs> no, but but that's. I don't even know your real the, name. <laughs> so so if you want to know my my real name is Winter. I'm old enough now just to tell people my real name now. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Um. So and now I got people trying to call me to mess up this. Thing when they know I'm supposed to be on here with you guys. Um, but um, you can hear me still, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it's Winter. That's my given name. Um, with but a y, my, right? With a, with a y. y, yeah, mm -hmm. with a Y. Um, but the, um, the, all the mayors throughout the years know me as Nav. My mother introduces me as Nav now. So, you know, growing up, they used to say make a name for yourself. So I guess I made a name for myself um but it was really my company my company means next advertised venue your venue or ours in other words we'll push your event at your venue or we'll do our own right you know what i'm saying and then people just started calling me nav because they knew the name and then they started saying promo because they didn't know my name they just knew what i did so that's where nav promo came from but this Navi though, right? Isn't it the Navi with the eyes? The ladies, the ladies started saying Navi instead of Nav. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but I, I, I was rapping first before anything else, so it was Navigator. At you know, young '90s, Navigator, it was just Navigator. Like I'm gonna call you Navigator from now on. <laughs> no, you, 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 you heard of you heard of? Have you heard of Nuwabu or Five Percent Nation? Of course. All right, so I was a Nuwabian, still am a Nuwabian in some sorts, um, but uh, but a lot of my friends were five percenters. I was not, so they called me El Noor because I was always trying to bring them to the light, the guiding light that leads this spiritually erring to their right. So I ended up battling somebody from Terror Squad in front of um, uh, Funky Fresh Records back in the day, um, and when that happened. Um, I said, Elnor, Navigator, Crowd Shaker, Head Mover, right? <laughs> and everybody's like, Elnor, Navigator, Crowd Shaker. And then the name stuck with the Navigator, and then I just named my company after me. So, yeah, so I'll go back a little bit. Born and raised in Boston? Yeah, I'm a I'm Dorchester kid. Whereabouts in Dorchester? Um, <sighs> Fields Corner, Carbon Square, Ashmont, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, oh. shout out to everybody out there. Uh, but, um, but yeah, man, that's where I was at, man. That's where I got chased by cops for throwing rocks across Blue Hill Ave. Um, I was over on Blue Hill Ave, Esmond Street. I, I've been all over. Been all over. I, lived, you know? I just moved out of Dorchester. I've been living in Dorchester the last 10 years. Oh, I really? Was, I was in Savin Hill and Pope's Hill, not too far from okay. uh, Fields Corner. But I yeah. was over there. I was originally from, I, I, when I was a kid, I was living in Roxbury when I was a kid. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But then my mother, we, we went to a better life in Dorchester from Roxbury. You know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> those, are the, those are the good old days. Better life. So was it pretty, pretty hectic back then? I mean, what was going on out back then? That, I mean, what was going I mean, on in the movie? Well, my, I, I lost two brothers when I, was, when I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? I lost my first brother when I was five. I lost another brother when I was 16. Um, Around the same time, Park died as well. Um, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, so it was just you know, I'm the I was the last you know male because my father died when I was 11 too. So I was, I was the last male in the family. You know, so I had to leave. I had to get out of, out of Dodge. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Salute to Kuvi. I see you, Kuvi. So um, you ended up in Dorchester. But yeah, man. So I mean, 
I mean, it was just, it was, um, it was a different time. Like, you, 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 people fought back then. People carried knives. People got stabbed. <laughs> like, uh, you know, I, I, I've, I've got stabbed a few times, and I've, I dodged bullets when I was a kid, man. I was dodging bullets on Esmond Street, all because I um, was looking for my sister, ran through a group of guys, and then a few days later, they said, they go that little Emma Effa back then, and uh, they shot. That was the first time. I was like maybe, I, was, I think I was around 12 years old, and they sh shot at me um, for nothing, just because I was looking for my sister, and I bumped them or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But that that's what it was. But actually, yeah. that wasn't Dorchester. That wasn't Dorchester, though. <laughs> you know, so, there, you know, so there was an element of craziness around there. When did you start rhyming? When did, did, That was the first thing? You started rapping first? Or? Oh, listen. Shout out to Jackie. Jackie was the reason why I started rapping. Jackie and, and Guru from Gangstar. All right? Guru, since I, I lost my... What'd you say? I'm saying it. Uh, Guru from Gangstar, when he, he had his baldy, he, he looked like my father when my father died of cancer. Hmm. So he looked like literally just like him. The heirs, you see the heirs and everything. He looked like my father. And for me losing my father, wanting my father, and then loving this girl, I came up with my first rap about a girl. And, you know, it was horrible, but... <laughs> you know, but that's what started me from rapping. But all the kids in the neighborhood liked liked my rhyme. Shout out to Jackie. But um, and after that, I I think I I, I got kicked out of school for like for like um for a knife one time and then a gun another time. Um, and uh, I and then I went to a, a, a alternative school. Alternative school. They ended up it, you know saying if you want to rap, you got to rap positive. So, and if you rap positive, we'll give you free studio time and we'll give you 500 bucks. So, I won. I, there was no question about it. I had to go get that 500. Shout out to Compass. I did it at Compass. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Daz One in here. Shout out to Heartbreak Kid. But, yo, I had to win. I had to win. So, I won. And, and after, after you get that first taste of studio time, first taste of women and everybody going, whoa, and going crazy, it, it's intoxicating. You know what I'm saying? It's intoxicating. So that just made me want to go harder, you know? When did you join the military? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, he was looking through pitches. Lee's was looking through pitches. He's no, taking this up. You've had these pitches for a while. I've known you've been in the military for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't post those much anymore, but um, I'm out of the military now, but I went in when I was 17 years old. Cause I, mean, I was, wanna... I was, I was getting into mad stuff, man. Getting you kind into of mad joined stuff. the military to get away from the trouble. Um, sorta, sorta. I mean, my my grandfather was in World War Two. My 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 uncles. I lost two uncles in in different two different wars. Um, my cousin was a West Point grad. She actually came to stay with us as a as a as a um, punishment from her mother, but that was the best thing for her because she came from military schools because she was a military brat. So she was like the top percentile in Boston public schools. And that's all, they only take the top five percentile and she um, she got, went to West Point. So just from all of that and, you know, fascinated by guns in the hood, um, but also with my mother training me to want to do better in life, you know what I'm saying? That's why I did it, man. I did it. I was tired of getting kicked out of school for dumb stuff, and I, I wanted to make my mother proud. What was that like being in the military? Um, it was good, and it was and it sucked. Was it the Marine? <laughs> what, what, what section of the military was it? Well, so I, 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 did, I did Marine training first, but then Mar a lot of the Marines, shout out to Marines, but they was like, Basically, if you was in a Marine, you was a sorry, you were a sorry excuse for a dying human being. You're a sorry dying excuse for a human being. I didn't like that. Um, so, I, so I ended up following, following after the rest of my family that, because um, we only had one Marine in my family and the rest were Army. So I ended up doing Army. You know what I'm saying? But um, I got, I got, I got jumped in there too. And, and then uh, we had, uh, we, we had the, um, in, in what do you call it? Investigations with that light and everything. Who who beat up Private Bookard? Who who 
prop, you know what I'm saying? Like, had nothing to do with me. But it, that type of stuff, it always seems like something. It's always an issue, you know what I'm saying? Somewhere, where all my life, has always been, fun, you know, something. But, uh, you know, you know, we get through it. We get through it. And, 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 but for the most part, it's good. It's good when you believe in good things about your country when you're that young and you don't know about what's really going on. It's, it, there's, a, uh, there's a certain melancholy and, and um, uh, ease feeling like you're doing something good before you know about certain evils behind the curtain. Um, so it, 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 with that respect, my experience was good because it made me feel good to be doing something different than, you know, what my, all my friends was doing, you know? Yeah. How long yeah. were you in there? Uh, eight years. I should have I stayed because if I stayed, I'd be retired now, sitting up collecting a check. But I was doing well as a promoter, you know. I was out there in the streets and, you know, we're bringing Wyclef to Breezeway on Blue Hill Ave. <laughs> like, we, we the truth. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, real quick before we get into promoting, um, did you end up in Iraq? The Iraq War? No. No. You must have just missed it or, I mean, you're, you're, it seems like you're no, in the military I, around I the time. Doing stuff with um, I was doing stuff with um, I was doing stuff with um, with remobs. So in other words, I was training and remobing people out there um, wow. to go out. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, like I got combat training and all that, but I my mother made sure I I did something that had a brain. So I I was training soldiers and actually doing the remobs and sending them out uh, during all that, that time during. Even during um, Desert Storm, Desert Shield, you know what I mean? Even d during then. You know? I come from a military family as well. I'm the first generation probably not to go. And, it, you know, I have nothing but respect for military. Um, my grandfather, my great-grandfather was in World War One. My grandfather was in World War Two. My dad was in Vietnam. And, mm. you know, I didn't, I didn't go. I had friends that went to Iraq, and they're pretty banged up now. But, um, what, was it because of how they was rocking with you? Or like, was it because of the way your dad and granddad was like riding you? No, they didn't ride me. They didn't really. I mean, there wasn't much going on when I was a kid about getting into the military at that point. Besides, Iraq came later. But um, it was it wasn't really pushed on me. I mean, my my dad wasn't really around, so he didn't really push it on me. So yeah. he lost. He had some substantial ear damage from Vietnam. Um, that okay. cost him later in life. I think that happened to me too. I think that yeah. happened to me just from the pow pow next to my ears. Yeah, I think that he, happened too. I, I I still don't know if it was that or the loud noise in the clubs. I'm not sure. Probably both. I'm not sure. My dad was a CB in Vietnam, so he was like building the roads and all that other stuff. I mean, they yeah. had guns on him, but he was more like heavy equipment operator and all that. And uh, okay. my grandfather was a straight army D Day. You know, was there. And then my great grandfather was kind of a medic, so he was in uh, doing a lot of oh, amputations yeah. in World War One, yeah. and, and that was not a pretty scene back then. Yeah, medics, medics, you have to be a special type of person to be a medic, man. You, it seems like, oh, that's the soft stuff. No, you see all the bad stuff. You know, you, you know, even if you're not in it, like at least if you're in it, you might die, and that's it. But no, and not if you have to see a bunch of people dying or hurting continuously. You got to be a special type of person. So shout out to all medics, man, for real. And there was they would saw off the amputations back then. Yeah, especially in them us. days. In them days, they just got to it. <laughs> you like this, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. Ha, ha, ha. yeah, you had to be a grim reaper, man. <laughs> you had to be grim reaper. People think that that stuff is um is like easy, man. That's that's hard, man. Shout out to Miles in it. That, it's hard. Shout out to them, man. Word. So after the military, when do you become a promoter? What 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 motivates that? Man, you know that you know that saying. It's not about what you know; it's who you know. So if I'm trying to be a rapper and all that other stuff, I'm like, all right, I'm approaching this business like, if I want to get in the game, I gotta know people. So don't, what I gotta be good money. Remember, we used to always say the word "good money." So I thought money. All right, these people want money. So if I'm the guy that brings them the money then I'm good money and that's my end. Because, you know, back in the days, you used to rap for rappers or send a tape in or something like that. 
But I'm like, if I know you and you know my name and I'm good money with you, then I have a relationship with you. Now I know you. You know what I'm saying? It was just that I got I got addicted to it. <laughs> I got addicted to the game, man. Um, and then certain certain rap came out that I couldn't stand. So <laughs> I, I was like, this is what y'all want? What was that? What was the rap that was? What was the era that came out that you weren't, weren't agreeing with? You, Soldier Boy, Tally Ho, <laughs> Running Man, Superman, that uh, watch me. This is the YouTube the sensation blow up, you know. So it's like two thousand five ish, four ish, something like that. Yeah. What was your first show you did? The first show I did, I was a kid, man. Well, like party promoted. Party, not not like a well, yeah, not I, like a, you, let, 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 yeah. I like also make out the point that you you do live events, but you also do club events. Yeah, I, I do was, club I events. Was more, I was. I did all more. kinds of stuff. Yeah, but um, I was when I was a live kid, events. I was like. I, Huh? I'm just saying, like, I Leeds Entertainment, we did live events. You you did live events, and you did club events. You did all types of stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. When that phone call came in, it messed up the audio, so I'm trying to listen close now. Um, but what happened was I was, I was, I was like 10 years old, 11 years old. My, a, lot, a lot of people don't know that my, my mother, um, my mother came from a, um, she came from a good home. But, you know, certain things are more, especially in those days, more uh, appealing. And she ended up, you know, partying and then having to get off of stuff that she was partying from. So with her um, doing that, and she's she's been clean for decades now, um, by the grace of God. Um, but uh, when I was at those meetings as a kid, and there was like, the, a white, it's called the White Church. It's in Roxbury. It's over there um, by... Um, Madison Park High. It was an old abandoned white church that they used to do these meetings in. And I said, can I do a party upstairs? That place is big. And it was like kind of like blasphemous doing the parties and having and having like doing the dance, doing the dance hall dances and everything. Shit out freaks, shit out freaks. I'd always have you know what I'm saying? But we was rocking. We was kids, man. And they let us do it. So that was like my first party party. You know what I mean? But um, how many then people I came up. out? How many people came huh? out? <laughs> how many people came we, out? Oh, we had a we had at least about sixty people. Sixty people then for kids. For kids? For the kids? Man, I was out there in schools telling my cousins for their schools to come out. I don't know, man. I just took I took to that like water right away. That's you crazy. Know? Yeah. What was your first concert you throw? Yo, the, yo, the first concert I did, you was there. Really? You was there. Um, and it was it was Joel Ortiz. It was Joel. Now I performed on stages before, but I did Joel Ortiz. I, I don't think it was him or Tabby Bonet, but I think it was. Remember Tabby Bonet? Remember that name? Um, that came. That came and went quick. He was good. Yeah, he was good. He was good, but he he was in that era of you. So yeah, he was, was DC. Doing, like, he was DC, right? He was on. The, yeah, uh, exactly. That, but I mean, he was doing offensive there. hip hop. Say there's again. A, there's a, there's a, there's a style they do down there in DC. It's like glow. Uh, Oh, oh, it's um, God, it's like it's, it's, it's like it's not house. It's it's like DC house. It's like disco y. Uh, yeah, it's this it's DC house, man. They 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 yeah. different. They yeah. different, but that's like that's kind of like when, when you look at the um, what do you call them? The uh, the when you go to New Orleans and they got their own little style, you know, in the Bayou, yeah. and, you know, it's kind of like the ingrained, you know, motherland of that state type yeah. sound. You know what I mean? I think that's pretty dope. I don't think Boston has that sound. Um, <laughs> we don't have that. You know, everybody talks about how America started in Massachusetts and Plymouth and all that, but we don't have any of that stuff. Um, <laughs> you know, but uh, but yeah, yeah. It, it, that I think that was the first one. I I drove I drove all the way down because I didn't trust it. I brought the money to to them directly in cash. Um, don't do that. Always do wire transfers, everybody. But 
Um, I brought it down to him in cash, and I went, and that's when I first met um, Street Sleepers. Um, what well, Drama King? Um, say his name. K Slay. K Slay. That's the first time I met him. That's right. Hey, if I if I start going a little off, I was in a car accident in 2019, so I'm a kind of cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. So if I, it doesn't don't, mean I was disrespecting King Slay. Don't blame me. Don't blame the car accident, Nap. Yo, I'm just, there's no reason why I can't remember K Slay except for the accident. But anyway, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I went down there. That's the first time I've ever been to satellite radio and all other stuff, and I was like, here. Um, but I had done stuff prior to that, but it wasn't my stuff. It was with Terrell Calloway. Um, shout out to Terrell Calloway, one of the forefathers of promotions in Boston. You know, it's funny you spring that up because I was drove by their old office down in the South End the other day. I was because that's yep. where I used to get my flyers when I first started yep. out. They did all the flyers. I would drive in there, drop my flyers, pick up my flyers, and uh, yeah, they were the. Uh, I was they, in there designing they, too. Okay. I was in there designing. They were the uh, promoters before us, right? That was the history yes, of them. One hundred percent. Okay. Actually, Lou Del Pidio bought his first club. That, that Lou Del Pidio owns a bunch of clubs downtown. Yeah. He, he bought his first club from Terrell, the the uh, the gallery. Oh wow, Miss Mo, I see you. Uh, fresh, I see you. But um, yeah. So that I mean that that's some real history there. But he showed me the game on being in the street. You know, what I mean, actually promoting hard and everything. And that, and I think I was doing Big Daddy Kane with him. Like at at the Roxy and all the hair shows, and then we did First Fridays, Boston, the the original First Fridays, where you had to come in a suit, you had to have a business card, you know what I'm saying, to get in. If you didn't have a business card or a business, it was a networking event. It wasn't because you got paid on first of the month and wanted to ball out, you know what I'm saying. But um, we 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 missed stuff like that. I started I started it again with a few people at at Daryl's Corner Bar, and it was pretty good. Um, People are asking for it now, but I don't know if all of them are gonna come out. They're all forty five now. Well let's talk about promote let's talk about promoting in the streets because you know, we live in an era now where it's digital marketing and uh, you know, people don't really do that that much. I mean you'll see flyers here and there, but you know, I'm from that era too. I you know, I wasn't in the streets heavy like you. I was in there, I was in other let outs, but let's talk about the you know, what that takes and what it's like doing that. Takes a lot of tenacity and a lot less sleep. You cannot sleep. If it's, I'm gonna tell you guys. I'm gonna give you the the, the trick. If you want to really get out there, don't just. Um, and I was just talking about this with somebody, a younger guy that you know. You know, when you're young, you know everything. But he's like, you, it's not about the flyers. It's not about the flyers. You got. It's all digital. I'm like, well, I'm going on with leads. How about that? But <laughs> I'm like, listen. <laughs> The um, there's some people that don't even go in, especially with concerts like this, where people was making do, doing music in the '90s. A lot of people aren't on social media; they're good, they're good with it, but they want to come see the shows. And sometimes people are just taking a break, but they might want to come to your party, and they might be taking a three day break from social media. You got to get out there. You want the word of mouth because if they just saw it and just kept kept skimming on on digital on social media. So what? They need to be reminded of it. They need to see it everywhere. If, if they need to hear it, see it, be, be handed it, that, that's real promotion. If you can actually get to somebody in three different ways of communication, now you've promoted your event. That's dope. So you got to get out there. You got to get out there. At one and point in time, we thought that this was going to be done, but no. Nah. It's not done. I, I mean, I'm glad you keep it alive. I don't. I didn't make flyers for the last eight years, but um, it was everything for me. And for, before social media, I mean, I, you're right though. The workload was crazy. I mean, I'd work all day, and then I have to go out at night. Sometimes it was raining. Sometimes it was snowing. I'd have to get a street mm -hmm. team together, and, I, and I'd be hitting out letouts and just putting the putting the flyer in everybody's hand and. Hanging out on Newberry Street or hanging out on Calm Ave or wherever. Three a.m. Three a.m. at the at the pizza shop, yeah. just waiting for people to go by. Hanging up a poster, only to go back three days later because it got ripped down. <laughs> you know, like, or an hour. You you got to check yeah. it in an hour. So Sometimes. like Rodigan, Junior Rodigan said he was like, "Yo, big up, big up, Nav, big up, Nav. He the first promoter, first promoter that I ever seen that." Put all his flyers on the gas station. I've never seen that. 
Every gas station I go to, I see now flyers, big up, wind up, blazing days. I see you, right? But I had to. Yeah. I had to. You know what well, I'm saying? It was, a, it was uh, a very important way of promoting back then if you didn't have a gigantic budget because, what, you know, you either had flyers or you had to go radio. Radio was very expensive. And yeah. it still is. And it still is. Or, or ads in, 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 like, papers and stuff. And that was expensive, too. It was cheaper and more cost-effective to have flyers and just get it up guerrilla marketing style wherever people mm -hmm. could see it. You'd have to always think yeah. the, the psychology was is where are people looking? You know, and get to those key points. And uh, you were very so, good at it. You were very good at it, man. No, I mean, you got to be out there, man. And it's all about how you handle the flight. You didn't just handle the flight, handle the flight. Yeah. When I used to run, run the street team and everything for Terrell, when we was doing First Fridays, I used to try to teach them. And I'd be like, listen, you can't just hand the flyer. Right. Say what it is. Say this Friday, this Saturday. Um, you can't, um, Remember when we used to do um, money off if you bring the flyer? Yep. So it wasn't about us reusing the flyer. What it was is it was a tactic. I'm giving away the whole game today. It was a tactic of making them keep the flyer, which made them stay reminded. So if you kept it in your car because you looked at it as money, if you looked at it as $5 off, you kept it, and it kept reminding you. You know what I'm saying? You, the ladies kept it in the purse. The guys kept it on a mirror, something like that. I don't, I don't even think people have mirrors or irons or iron boards anymore. The only mirror they got is in the bathroom, but <laughs> you used to have on phone. All that. Shout out to tunes, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But um, but yeah, man, it's it, hitting it, up the cars. It's a trust hitting, mind. Huh? Hitting up, remember hitting up the cars? You have to, <laughs> all the cars. Oh yeah. Out, so I, and here's the other thing. What's up? Cars. What's up, Kooji in here? Um, Kooji's gonna be helping me. He's a guy that's formidable. He's a young guy, but he's formidable in, in the Providence area. He's gonna be helping me for October 15th with the locks, uh, along with our friends, uh, always moving to LBM, um, uh, and uh, also plug them in. But um, the um, don't put the, the flyer on, on the windshield. <laughs> don't put the flyer on the windshield. Why? Because if it rains or something like that, it's gone and they're going to be more mad at the party. If it's not it's not raining, but their car's dirty and they gotta reach over. Now you got their outfit messed up. Now they're really pissed. All right. Um I will shout to Raf Ruler. Um you gotta put it in where, where, where would you put it? Uh well I originally I used to put it on the windshield, but then I put it on the driver's side door. On the door, right? In that window, right? Yeah. But here we go. It's still a window and it can still <laughs> rain. So you don't, and, and if they don't see it and they roll it down, now guess what? It goes inside, and now you've messed up yeah. the mechanisms, and now they're really pissing. Next time I see leaves, <laughs> it's on. He owe me. He owe me 80 bucks, right? Yeah, I can see that. I never got that it's phone call, but you're right. Uh, you're totally right with that. Yeah, but here's the thing. If you owe, I'm giving away the whole game. Hey, if y'all appreciate anything I'm telling y'all, Make sure y'all um, grab tickets, go to naventertainment.com and get the tickets to the lot. But absolutely, I open up the handle and I put it in the handle. So now, before you can even open up the door, you have to put your hand on the flyer. Ooh, ooh, ooh that's good. Ooh. That's good. You know what I'm saying? That's gangster, right? That's good. I got it in their hand. I got it in your hand. And here, here's the other thing. If you're promoting a, a Latin event, but you go to a club and you don't even check what type of music it is, you're going to waste a lot of flyers. Because if they don't speak the language, you might have 15 to 10% of those flyers actually considered. Not actually bringing a profit, but considered. And then half of that is going to go, right? That's the rule of thumb. But so you got to know where you're putting these, these flyers. Don't blast people with flyers. What you're going to do is make the city create an ordinance against promoters. Don't do it. Yeah. And that's okay. a very, another, that's another good point that you brought up because towards the end of my flyering, the venues really got strict with it. 
you weren't just able to go in front of anyone's club anymore or anyone's um, venue and hand out let out anymore. And there was this big thing written, you know, the guy I used to work with at the Middle East, he wrote this whole thing about rules of flyering and postering and all the rules and regulations of it. And it really limited us because you're right. They were getting fined. The venues were getting fined if your poster or your was put somewhere it wasn't supposed to be put or was taped up somewhere. And it was becoming yeah. vandalism. And you, the thing, the thing is they you shut it. They that, pretty much they it, nipped you the, have they, consideration. you got to have consideration. Right. you got to have consideration. you got to. And just like I tell some security guys, don't think that your job is just to show force. You're in a matter of service. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. You're in a matter of service. So, don't just and, and 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 when you're out there promoting, you have to serve the community that you're promoting to. In other words, serve them well and don't have them suffer anything. And if you if you pass out flies in front of somewhere and the flyer hits the ground, pick it up. One, and, uh, you want a selfish reason? If somebody sees your fly on the ground, people will follow us. Hmm, somebody else do it. I'm gonna do it, Dad, because I want to be big and bad too. I want to be high up and don't care about some fly, even though you really want to go to it. The other thing is this. They, they're going to make them, their security, their owner and everything run you out of time every time you go up there. Remember when you used to try to go in Lansdale Street and pass out flyers and then they started pushing us? They're the first people that started pushing us on the curb. Lansdale Street was the first one. You know what I'm saying? So, And it's just, it's just respect. And no one's going to respect you if you don't respect them. Respect is a big thing. Real shit, man. Yeah. Real quick, you're a little fuzzy on the mic. Is there something on your phone? I'm going to come right back. I'm going to come right back. All right. So we're taking a break here. This is Intermission with Navi Promo. (laughs) (laughs) Shout out to everybody tuning in. We got some real game going on here. Um, Real promoter game and uh, etiquette. uh, (laughs) It's great talking about because I used to do a lot of this stuff. He was a lot more thorough than I was. But, uh, yeah, this this is great great stuff here and he's uh he was heavy in the streets handing out flyers i i hadn't really done it in the last 10 years but i switched to digital but he's great and we're coming back here here we go here we go shout out everybody tuning in i saw you check mark raf the ruler max the g i'm yeah digital too i'm on i'm on with leads edu i'm yeah. with edu right now I'm digital. I'm digital right now. You sound way better. Thank you. Because I didn't want to get this muffled because you kick so much game there. Yeah. People, uh, promoters, like just I was saying when you were paused, like that street team shit you were talking about. That was crazy. Yo, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta think. You gotta think. How do you get the job done, even if you're not there? Right. You get what I'm saying? You, you like how you accomplish? How do you accomplish the mission? And how? And how are you received? And how do people receive you when they when you they come to your venue? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you like when we back when we did the, and the, you can take the same lesson to things now, even though no one's wearing shoes in the clubs anymore. Whoa, um, hold on. No one's wearing shoes in the clubs. What are they wearing? Just you, Leeds. <laughs> uh, Le- I don't think Leeds ever wore shoes. I think the only time he's ever wore shoes was probably a wedding. I have tons of shoes. What, what, what do you mean? They're wearing sneakers in the club? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, they're wearing sneakers. Oh, okay. well, the sneakers yeah, are freaking more money than shoes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. But the, back when we had to be a certain dress, I told this kid, I was like, yo, if we're going to tell them you can't have a certain footwear, you can't be out there with neon orange footwear that they can't wear. You know what I'm saying? Like, think about how you're received. If you're going to talk about, A, don't mess up my party and start fights, how about you not start a fight with the patrons or, or your partners or anything like that? If respect goes a long way. And even if somebody, yeah, get your Stacey Adams on. If respect <laughs> goes a long way, right? If if other people see somebody else being disrespectful, don't worry about, oh, I got I to gotta show that I'm, I'm this man and that man. If you have to show it, you ain't it. If you have to show your sign of force, you ain't got the force. It's kind of like a peacock. You could really hurt a peacock. A peacock isn't, isn't that dangerous, okay? They're a little dangerous, not much. But what they do is they put out their feathers as a sign of, like, danger, or they're angry to try to ward you away, not knowing that 
it's going to make you want to rub it because it's beautiful. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> the same thing that you do, the same thing you do when you're trying to be like, oh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a show of force. Dude, now for the guy that loves that action, now you're food. They're like, oh, yes. So take it easy because when you, if you really that guy, you just wait till for it to pop off. You don't have to show a sign of force. And I'm talking about security. I'm talking about people that's in the industry, no matter what industry you are. It, it, it just, just have respect for yourself and other people and make sure you're received correctly. That's the main thing. I mean, I used to come off real rough. I, did I come around rough around the edges when you first met me? You were kind of, you know, you, 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 you put your presence up. You were, you were kicked down the door type. You were like, I'm coming. I had, my, I had my peacock feathers. I had my peacock feathers up. You were just like, you were promoting him, and I'm coming in whether you like it or not. That was kind of what your, your theory was. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, and the thing is, I, I said before I met you, I was like, listen, I know this guy's a dude, so I, I got to come at him respectfully or whatever. But the whole, I think it's because I'm not as tall as Leeds. Yeah. But when I walk in the room, I, when I rock in the room, it'll feel like it. <laughs> it'll feel shoulders, like it. man. You come in and you got shoulders out, chest out. You come out, you come out, chest out. <laughs> oh, no, you got, but that's how, but think about where I came from. I got stab wounds here, here, everywhere. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I, you, feel that. I, you, you, you know what I'm saying? You got to come like a soldier. And I was a soldier by the time you met me. So if I was, uh, man, I was I always, a soldier in the streets first. No, you'd always, for those who don't know, Navi would always be at the back door of the Middle East. He wouldn't come in the front door. He'd just be yeah. chilling at the back door, waiting for the headliners to show up and be like, Leeds, just let me in. And I'd just be like, all right, well, I'm not going to say no. <laughs> He's coming in anyway, so. <laughs> Yo, here's the thing. All right, so when you go to the front door, all right, we're going to put it all the way out there. What's up, La Bonita? What's up, Supreme? In here, I see y'all. Listen, when you go to the front, the lady at, that y'all always had at the Middle East was the worst ever. I'm like, listen, I'm Nav. Leeds ain't got a problem with it. Woo, woo, woo. I helped promote the show. I will come take his flyers. I promoted the show. I helped him out. A lot of people don't do that. So for me to say that, it was like, yeah, right. Because people didn't care if you lived, died, burned, drowned in those days. I was a person that said, look, if I ain't got nothing going on on, on October 15th, I'm going to push that event. Just because it helped the city as a whole. You don't want the city to be like, I ain't going out in Boston or Cambridge anymore. The, 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 the events are whack. So if you want to push your event, stop worrying about helping somebody else. If you, feel like, if you feel like you helping somebody else diminishes your flavor or if somebody is pushing their brand, it hurts your brand, then you have an inferiority complex. And you need to hold hold your go cojones a little higher. <laughs> All right, straight up. Yeah, you stop you. having this ha having this complex. Have, stop having this complex of of who's better than. I say it on on um because I'm also on tag now, and um shout out to JG Promotions in here. I'm on, I'm on tag now, and I, I have a number one morning show on there. It's called the Wake Up Call. Nice, right? And I tell people because but. We have banner ads for our shows if you do really well. So I have a banner ad up, and, I'm, and people say, well, how do I do this? How do I do that? I say, don't worry about being a better streamer. The majority of people that's on there dominate me as a streamer. I'm not a streamer, okay? I stream, but I'm not a streamer. Just worry about being original and first in whatever thought or idea that you have. You don't have to be the best. Just be original and be first. No. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Oh, so my thing is, Leeds was bringing everybody to Cambridge. I needed to be at the back door because I needed to be the first to bring them guys in the hood. I had to. Yeah, I mean, it, but you never, you know, the thing is, if you had just hit me up and been like, yo, Leeds is coming through, put me on the list, I would have, but you never did. You just showed up. I learned. I learned to do that. I did you learn to do up, that. You just show up and be like, yo, I'm here. And I'd be like, I'm in the middle of this show. And I'd be like, you know, that's why I just let you in the back. I did do that. In the beginning, I would be like, Leeds, I'm here. He'd be like, you're here. I didn't yeah, know you were like, coming. All right, let me stop the show. Navi's here. We'll, you know, we'll throw. Yeah, you're supposed out. to go. You're supposed to go. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hold on. No, but, um, no, I, I was trying to make my, because what I started doing, and you, you caught wind of it, I book, I book notable names in different states. Yeah. So my thing is, like, if Lee's beat me to the punch with this one, 
I'm going to put them in Philly. I'm going to put them in Tampa. I'm going to put them somewhere. We're going to get to the bag. Cause, and that's how I became a um, I'm booking agent. Them, because, I'm, I'm going to put them in Revere the next night on an after party. <laughs> we did don't, that. Don't we, sleep, dude. Don't sleep. I'd be booking the shows, and Navi be right on it, booking the after parties right afterwards, dude. Slick, slick yo, dude. I'm gonna get a piece. I'm, yo, in it, yo, if any show come around here, me up, me, me need a nickel for every blood clip. You know what I'm saying? Dollar that you sell, right? But my thing is, if you was beating me, listen, Leeds was doing it harder than me before I could ever, right? So I watched him. I watched Terrell Calloway. I watched JC, right? I watched Eddie Q, mm. right? Yep. I watched these guys. Right. But I always I felt like I was always coming at least respectful because I would always support the show. I'd always put it out there and help you make money and not ask for a dime. I've never asked you for a dime. Not once. You know what I'm saying? So I felt like I was leading with respect. Um, I hope it came off that way at some point in our relationship. I, I never felt disrespected by you at all. I, you know, I, I knew where you were coming from, so it was never, like, I, there had to be a level of, you have to have a level of tenacity to break through in that game. You got to, mm -hmm. and, and it's, back then, too, it was very, just kind of had to, you had to kick down the door, you know, and, yeah. you know, you'd have to, you'd have to take a few no's before you got in, you know, and you'd have to, mm -hmm. you don't have to roll with the punches, so I always understood that about you, and because I was the same way in some form, a different form, but the same yeah. way. So I wanted you to be in there. I wanted you to succeed, and I, and I supported other promoters. It, you know, it, and, you know, yeah, sure, there's competition, but at the same time, you were kind of doing a different thing. We weren't doing the same exact thing, yeah. you know what I mean? No. You were, Maybe with the same ingredients. We were doing the same ingredients, but we were just packaging it differently, and we had, we had different crowds. Like, did. honestly, honestly, let's keep it 100. The, 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 the white crowd in New England – learned about hip-hop because of leads they did and they shows. loved it yeah shows right i was in cambridge. but the thing <laughs> huh you was in cambridge well, see, but i learned the, i learned but you brought people from beyond cambridge no, they was coming from worcester they was coming from everywhere no, you know what i mean the events were in cambridge yeah, so yeah, there was a lot you know I learned from Metro Concepts. You learned from the Catholic. Yes, shout out to Metro Concepts. I learned from Metro Concepts who were doing shows in the Middle East. Yeah, yeah. It was something about a show being in Cambridge versus being in Boston. First of all, Boston didn't really show a lot of love towards hip hop shows coming off of what I was coming off of. They were shutting us down. That's why I could only do after parties. I couldn't right. do the concerts. So Cambridge you know? was like this, even though it was like literally pretty much Boston, Boston crowd was going there. It was something different mm -hmm. about it. Brought in a different element. It was, it was Cambridge, so people felt different about it. You know what, you know what it was? It was that any any rough stuff that happened in Cambridge was not publicized. Yeah. <laughs> they knew they had the money to dilute it, and but the stuff that was happening in Boston, if it didn't go well, you heard about it. Right. <laughs> so so it made people feel safer when they went to Cambridge, and, and to a degree, Cambridge was. And still is a little safer than Boston. Um, I was always told that, like, dudes, the troublemakers, a lot of the troublemakers won't go to Cambridge because where they're at in Boston. It was like it was like an, it was unfamiliar territory, and that they didn't they didn't want to go all the way to Cambridge. You know what no, I mean? what, what it was is the cops. You didn't want to deal with those cops. You didn't want you did not want to mess with Middlesex County. Middlesex County will not only lock you up, but if if you don't. If you don't, um, if, if they don't, oh. uh -oh. you get what I'm saying? Is it, you good? So, um, say what you were saying about Middlesex again, cause I lost. I said, I said, not only did they definitely lock you up, but if they tried you and then they couldn't get a conviction, they had the money to retry the case. Mm. You get what I'm saying? With a whole new jury, with a whole new, whatever, right? with more discovery. So cats that was in the street like that didn't want to mess with Middlesex. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got, I got, I was locked up in Middlesex for getting beat up by state troopers. Ouch. No guns, no drugs, <laughs> none of that. 
Yeah. But I was facing five years. Jumped by the cops. Cops. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Can't, Middlesex didn't play, man. Middlesex did not play, man. For real. You know? But uh Yeah. Yeah, it was a, it was a different it was a different time, but it was a time that made that it made men men in this in this industry. And um a lot of people even felt like I fell back if I stopped doing events. It's just that there was a certain respect level that was missing. Even even Terrell got into a little scuffs <laughs> at his age uh, with other promoters. It was just different. <laughs> well, like and, it, um, it was it was a certain you needed to be a certain type of personality to do it. Yeah. You needed to be uh, a so called alpha male, a very aggressive, moving forward out on the street guy person. But you can't you can't get your feathers ruffled too easy though. You can be assertive, yeah. not really aggressive. But just assertive. Well, I mean, aggressive but don't... Like you had to take action. You had to be. Yes. You had to. You know. You had to be out there and be motivated. Self starter. You had to be a self starter. Absolutely. You had to be a hustler. You had to be a hustler. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. So, you know. See, he uses he uses the hood words. I use I use the words from a college I never went to. Uh... <laughs> but yeah, you don't necessarily need to be that these days. Yeah. No. Um. Well, but the thing is, now when you talk to some guys, it's like they get. Their feathers ruffled too easy, man. Way too easy. You still got to have some thick skin. You can't be, uh, you know, talking behind each other's back, feeling feeling some kind of way just because someone's doing well or someone is tooting their horn. Sometimes you got to toot your horn. If 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 you don't toot your horn, no one's gonna know you. Yeah, I mean, period. You know, it, it's a thin line there. Uh, <laughs> it could be. A, it's, it's it's a tough line, but you know, I, you have to have thick skin because. People are going to give you shit on the street. You know, they're going to say, fuck your event. They're going to say all this other crazy shit. Knock your flyer out of your hand when you try to hand it to them. They're going to say. Oh, they, uh, they would take the flyer and go, yeah. four. Yeah. Rip it up. And then I would. Rip it up right in front of you. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> That's what I think of you. You know what I mean? And you, you'd have to, and you couldn't. You know, as mad as you would get, how disrespected you would get, you just kind of have to be like, that's just part of the game. You have to check. You know what I would say? I would say, I was like, this dude's going to want to come to the event. <laughs> and he ain't going to get like, in. I ain't going to let him remember. I ain't going to let him in. <laughs> no, no, no. No, listen, my mother, thank God for my mother, man, Larray Barton. Listen, let me tell you something. She would said, kill him with kindness. She's right. What I would do, I would see that same person that ripped it up in front of me. And they would think that I forgot. But I'd come out and I'd say, him right there, he works with me. Right? Good one. And I'd bring him to the front of the line. And then he'd be like, oh, good look, man. Good. But, but what, he, what he felt like is that he checked me, right? Yeah, what's good? Yeah, man, no doubt. Right? And I'd be like, and I'd bring him in. Close. I bring him in close, right? I'll be like, hopefully you won't rip up my next flyer. <laughs> yes. Right? And then, so I, I said, hopefully. I didn't say you better not. I didn't check him. I requested it, right? Mm -hmm. So I didn't say anything wrong, but he felt it. Yes. And you get you what know, I'm saying? I, yeah. I'm older now. I realize that approach worked. You know, I made a lot of mistakes falling into that, you know, trying to jump into battle with everybody that disagreed. But now I see – I've seen it for a little bit now, but, like, you know, that is the way. That's the way. That's the way, man. Like, you got you to gotta have professionalism. You got to have a certain uh, level of uh, candor and, and, and uh, swag. Uh, they don't use swag anymore. What's the replacement for swag? The, the drip. <laughs> yeah, but drip is more fashion. Uh, they have no swag. People have no more swag. They just don't have it. Yeah. Play it down. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you gotta have it, man. You gotta have it. But um, but, but yeah, I mean, like, go ahead. I was gonna say, you know, you've you've gone on to. I mean, the list of names of people you've worked with. I mean, Jay the Kiss, T Pain, DJ Khaled, Trey Song, Beanie Man, Joel Ortiz, DJ Envy, Jeremiah, Keisha Cole, Wyclef. Conan, Big Daddy Kane. I mean, it's a great list. Who am I leaving out? I know his Mano is in there, um, but uh, shout, shout, my 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 boy Frank, my White uh, D, 
from um, Always Move is Gonna Hate Me for this, but Dipset. We've also worked with Dipset. And you did Naughty by Nature. With, with, with Rodigan. Yeah. With Rodigan. Yeah. That's you know what I'm saying? I, I, but, uh, Naughty by Nature was always a bucket list for me. I never did it, but uh, I was always a bucket list. I always tried to do it. Yeah, I think I'm going to bring it back. So so here we go. I, this is my 20th year doing it, right? Yeah, what is the 20th year anniversary show? Well, I guess maybe the last right. this one is. <laughs> yeah. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Hopefully, uh, Leeds will promote it for me so I can get some of the crowd that's not tuned in to me. But <laughs> I'm doing 20 concerts for my 20th anniversary. Yeah. Would you like to do, in front of everybody in the world, oh boy. would you like to do Naughty by Nature concert with me? Sure, I'll help you promote it. I don't know if I can't put up the money these days, but... <laughs> write a check, Leeds. Write a check, Leeds. I don't have a check to write on that one, brother. Listen, here we go. Here's that was the always, thing. To, be honest, Leeds. to be honest, I'm going to try to put the business out there. Naughty by Nature was always too expensive for me. <laughs> you know, like, they were just always too expensive. Hey, hey, I'm going to keep it 100, too. Like, that's the thing. Certain promoters, they try to act. We don't try to act like when something we're not. The locks that's coming October 15th to the Strand Ballroom in Providence is, more, is too expensive for me. When Fat Joe said the price went up, he lied. They went up, up. It's funny you put it this it. way. It's funny, you know, because my 10 year anniversary, I had the locks. I don't know if you were there. Were you there for that one? That was when they I might have been in Florida. Yeah, they were first, they were just starting to tour again together. And yep. they were doing small clubs to see how it go. And I luckily, I coordinated it with my anniversary. We had the locks at the Middle East. It was crazy. Yeah, my thing, I, I, think, I think that was after I brought Jada Kiss and Styles P to Grove Hall. Yep. After that, I, I had moved to Florida. Yep. So I think that's when I was running around with T-Pain and them. Um, actually, somebody ran, ran up on me and said, hey, you're on Netflix. I didn't know I was on Netflix running around with Pain. Oh, but, really? I didn't um, know that either. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's in a bodyguard chronicle or something like that. But um, shout out to um, Machine in here. I see you. Um, Char I'm waiting on, on Charlie right now, too. I need all the help I can get on this lock show. Um, but – Cool. He, they're too expensive. What I, back to what I was saying, they're too expensive for me. So I had to call in some super friends, LBM uh, um, Promotions, LBM Entertainment. They they um, came through like gang buses. Also, from from New York, um, Plug Them In Entertainment, it's good to have super friends when Leeds doesn't want to get down with you. Um, so, <laughs> you know what I mean? Dog. Shout out to Kind Farms as well. Shout out to Always Moving. Um, we also got we got the DJs on deck. We got Hypertones, G Biggs, and also you know you know Ruckus, right? DJ Ruckus. I know the name. I, I I'm, uh... <laughs> yeah. He has a group called the Blend Compadres now, and they actually made the actual coffin for Tech, um, the Locks DJ. Oh. They, they made the coffin for him, so they're gonna be there doing handling all the technical stuff too. Did, did you Millie's deal? is on the show. Yeah, shout out Millie's is on it. Did you deal yeah. with Christy, their manager? Is she still the manager? So, in the past, yes. Okay, not anymore? Not on this one. Oh, your volume's a little weird again. Is it better now or no? Yeah, you're good now, yeah. All right. So, Christy, I've dealt with her, dealt with Brian, um, dealt with Hit. You remember Hit? I Hit was always the one driving the, driving the turtle top. Oh, okay. Um, dealt with Kiwi. Shout out to Kiwi. Kiwana. Yep. She handled a lot of stuff. Oh, these are over the years of me doing multiple shows right. with the locks. Yeah. The locks is they have a lot of calls coming in now, so now live uh, Rock Nation has to handle. Ah, then, then the price really goes up. <laughs> <laughs> but I see Rock Nation on anything, and, and I'm, you know, I'm just saying this from a promoter, and I think you'll agree. Anytime we got to deal with Rock Nation, we're gonna have to pay more. Yeah. Yeah, and the thing is, Rock Nation is looking at me to get them more dates in different states, too. So they're kind of like, like, what do you do when you're a promoter? You, like, what, you could tell me. What do you do as a promoter? How do you retire? Is it that you own your own venue, or do you get consumed by a conglomerate like Rock Nation? Well, I mean, for me, the, the latter was I became a promoter, then I became a talent buyer for the Middle East, and then I moved my way up into manager and then general manager. And I was just, you want to be a part of the venue and be booking. You can't mm -hmm. just book hip hop though. You can't, I mean, if you were going to take over a club, 
doing club nights and you can book club nights. Yeah. But I mean, I was doing venues, but yeah, I mean, I think the natural progression is to go work for a company because if you're out here, because you can't, you, can't you don't want just, to risk the money anymore. You, well, first of all, you don't have, yeah, you, the money is an issue. Um, and there's not, you, the venues aren't just open to anybody. You, you know, you either go work for Live Nation, you go work for AEG, or you go work for a different club. You yeah, know, so my, my, my thing is, I tried to do that route, because let's don't, don't get it twisted. He wasn't just running the Middle East. I heard, heard through the um, grapevine when a certain guy left and moved back to New York that Leeds ended up getting into the House of Blues, and he was no. handling – some of the bookings. That's not true. I never worked at the House of Blues. Live Nation would never would never work with me. Um, they, uh, I helped promote a couple things, but they 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 have a pretty strict policy of in house only. Okay, yeah. The only thing I was able to do at the House of Blues was with Tito Jackson, yeah. <laughs> the, him going to uh, when he was going into office the first time. That's, that's it. They're, they're very strict. that's politically why a promoter cannot go uh, far enough. If if the House yeah. of Blues was an open venue like the Middle East, I yep. would have done shows there. I would have been way bigger. You know, I was able to luckily do shows at the Palladium in Worcester, but yeah, it's too hard. It's a drive. It's a drive, and it's um, people rather play the House of Blues in Boston because it's Boston. So you, you, Here, you, here's the thing. Here's the thing. There's a way to do it, and 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 I I wanted you to be a part of this for a long time, right? I created a, a network called Promo City, and I get a, I got a, a bunch of different promoters in a bunch of different um, states, and we book the same act. So if the act wants seventy five thousand, and then you offer them fifty thousand, they're gonna say no. But if you offer them fifty thousand fifteen times, they're going to say yes. And that's what Live Nation and AG do. Um, yeah, that's what they do. Um, to get the price. That's what I do. And to have a That's what I do. No, you do too. That's what reality, we do. But the reality of what I really noticed was if you're not making the ancillaries as far as the bar money, ticket money, and you're taking that yeah. kind of risk for 15% if you're lucky maybe sometimes, the stress of it all in a very competitive market as far as it was for me wasn't worth Still it anymore. Is wasn't worth it anymore you know unless i was you have to make extra money other than just the door money because the door money is just not enough sometimes so it's like that's well, why working they, for a let, venue i'm gonna I'm 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 fix my volume and it, tell it tell us about your um the the extra money that you would get i'm coming right oh man talking about extra money he's interviewing me right now this this interview is really fucking going off though i thought this was going to be a shorter one <laughs> But we're coming back with Navi. We're taking another brief intermission here. Longest interview yet, fellow promoter, that's why, because there's so much to talk about. Yo, 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 we back with Navi. Navi, you there? Yeah, you supposed to go ahead and tell it just tell tell it while i was you know oh no don't i was stop. just saying i mean the money like getting a salary job for a club or getting like you know that work and that was really what really made me last longer you know it was yeah because uh, at the end of the day i had to compete against live nation and ag and i did compete but at the end of the day their pockets are so much bigger than an indie club or indie promoter you can only do so much well and, you, listen you if i have you you know, you know who um Tony Koo is down in Orlando. I know that name. I don't really know. Yeah, him. so I worked with Tony Koo before, uh, and now we we got LBM. We got um uh, uh plug them in. We got a bunch of people. If we come together, we have the bag, and we make <laughs> the bag, and we just increase the bag. Well, the other issue is COVID. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, that's another thing. And that's why I did the locks um, October 15th at the Strand Ballroom, Providence, Rhode Island. Um, Good voice. Uh, we, um, I'll tell you in a second about that voice. Um, but that's why I did it in Providence, because we know that Massachusetts leads the way in, the, in the, some of the least uh, COVID uh, um, cases, because... People wear more masks around here, and they got a problem with shutting down. 
So I, I did it in Providence in case anybody's asking. Um, that's funny. That's the, first, that's the only thing she says while I'm in here. Um, because if it shuts down here, Providence is almost live free or die. Um, and they're going to keep rocking at least for another two weeks after we get shut down. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I did it. I wanted to save the show. So please save the show. Please come out because after this, we're bringing Buster Rhymes. So everybody get your tickets for the locks, Millie's, um, Dre Robinson, um, uh, uh, Cy Law, HB, um, HBK, and also Ishan. You know about Ishan, right? Of course. Ishan, he's on the bill as well. Um, interesting so, ad. <laughs> yes, yeah, interesting ad. But he has a different crowd, and we want to incorporate as many different crowds as possible so they can get some of this work, some, some of this real hip-hop, some of this work live in your face, not not in a big old venue where you can't even see the artist. You can see the artist. You can, the, the sweat and the spit will be right there. You know what I'm saying? Right there. Well, LOX, that's... legendary. Legendary is the name of it. All right? So I had to bring a legendary group, and they charging me for it. And they're charging me. Well, I think that's the best way to wrap this up. October yeah. 15th at the Strand, the legendary locks, the champs are here. Nabby the champs Cuomo. is here. Nabby Cuomo. Nabby mm -hmm. Entertainment, 20 years in the game. Brother, thank you for your time. Thank you for being a part of Promo City. We're happy that you're going to get back into the game leads. We, are, we, we encourage you to uh, lead with your good foot and be proactive. And let's, let's make something happen. Absolutely, All right. man. Well, thank everybody for tuning in to the Leeds Edutainment Podcast with Navi Promo. We'll talk soon, brother. We out.